software to understand how structural equation modeling is done. Okay. So why SEM? Let's try to understand why are we resorting to SEM. We've already talked about it in terms of what are the advantages. Let's see what are the other advantages. So all your multiple regression, ANOVA, correlation, these are called first generation uh, multivariate analysis. Right? These suffer from some li limitations. First, it involves simple model structure. That is, if you go back, we've only talked about simple linear regression, simple correlation. We've not talked about the other topics. The reason because it becomes too complicated. The main thing, the main thing, the main problem with it is that you'll have to calculate individual regressions for the model. So if there are 30 dependencies, you'll have to calculate each regression for each dependency using multiple regression. But if you use SEM, it is calculated for the whole thing. Right? So analysis becomes that much more e easy. Okay? It's not like you can't do it with multiple regression. You can do it with multiple regression also. But the errors start piling up. Because their error is calculated not for individual items, it is calculated for the whole thing. Whereas here, you have error calculated for individual observations. Okay, we'll see how that is done. Restricted to processing observable variables. I, to I told you that SEM, with SEM we are analyzing constructs. A construct is not a observable data point. I can't look at you and say, how are you intelligent or not? Right? It's not directly observable. But I can I can see how tall you are or how I mean how much do you weigh? What is your skin color? All of the or what your age is, these are all directly observable. Right? So for latent variables, your first generation uh, multivariate analysis does not work. Okay. Next, measurement error. There is no measurement error, right? That's what we talked about till now. That individual observed data points, we are not calculating error. So measurement error is not looked at. So these three are the basic limitations in your first generation multivariate analysis. Okay. Coming to your second generation, these are all the different multivariate analysis in the second generation. That is CBSM, PLSM, CFA, growth modeling. If you've not heard about it, not a problem. CBSEM is nothing but covariance based SEM. PLSM is nothing but partial least square SEM, which we already talked about. We talked about full least square. Yeah? PLS means partial least square. Okay? It is not full least square because it is not a simple regression. It is a multiple regression. So that's why you have partial. Okay? CFA confirmatory factor analysis, growth modeling. These are all different. If you've heard about it, great. If you've not heard about it also, no problem. Okay? But, but what we are going to talk about is PLSM. Uh, CBSM, which I said is covariance-based SEM, is something like correlation. Right? So what correlation is to first generation, CBSM is to second generation. And what regression is to first generation, PLSM is to second generation. You can understand it like that. Right? Of course, it's an upgrade. So, second generation multivariate analysis, they overcome these limitations. Okay? That is, complex and multifaceted networks can be estimated. So, uh, uh, I think we don't have anybody from data science, but machine learning, we've heard about machine learning. Yeah, machine learning is based on this particular. Alright? So, neural networks, Artificial intelligence, machine learning, all of this stem from here. Okay? Because this is able to analyze complex networks. Right? It is able to analyze latent variables. That is what artificial intelligence is, right? What is artificial intelligence? Meaning even subjective data also can be interpreted. That is basically that is what artificial intelligence is. That is subjective data also can be interpreted. Right? 
Otherwise, objective data our computers were interpreting. But subjective data, artificial intelligence is interpreting. And that is done using SEM because it, use, it analyzes constructs which are latent variables. Okay? Can be used for observable and latent variables, that's what we talked about. More robust model because it considers measurement error also. Okay? Apart from this, PLSM has no distribution assumptions. Indirect effects are also considered. So indirect effects is something like that. Mediation moderation, have you heard about mediation and moderation? Mediating variable, moderating variable. If you go back to uh, our discussion on correlation and the example of ice cream and sunburn, the mediating variable is temperature. That is affecting the relationship. Moderating, very on the same lines, you have even moderation. We'll talk about mediating and moderating uh, in our discussion here. What I'm trying to say is that, till now we have not talked about that. There is no consideration for mediating and moderating in correlation. That's it. And we have not even talked about it even in regression also. But in SEM we are talking about it. That's why you have indirect effects also. So here the indirect effect is the sun, right? Correct? Okay. Also works for small sample sizes. This I have already mentioned. Theoretical foundations. So I have taken... Okay, so far are we on track? Yeah? Everybody? Sir? Okay. So now I am going to try to explain theoretical foundations based on the you know, the model itself, instead of going theory first and then solving and all, all of that. We're not going to solve anything today because we can't do it with Excel. Okay? For this, you require those softwares. Okay? Which is not available for free and it costs a bomb. Right? So, we're not going to solve anything, but we're going to understand how solutions happen. Okay? Again, how solutions happen based on regression only. There are two variables. Here, instead of variable, I'm, you know, substituting it with a construct. So, a construct will be affected by multiple variables. Right? We've understood what regression is. Now, we are scaling that up to multiple variables with a construct. Okay? So, here, I'm taking that construct of perceived quality. Perceived quality is a construct. It's not a directly observable variable. It's perception. What I feel about let's say the lighting in this class is a perception. It will change, it's not uh, objective. Yeah. So I've taken perceived quality for which I have uh, three indicators in the sense I have formulated three questions. See, how do you uh, do analysis with the questionnaire? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, with questions only, huh? but the thing is, they are indicative of some variables. Yeah, those questions are indicative of some variables. Here, these questions are indicative of perceived quality. You know, I'm asking three questions. So with three questions, I'm trying to gauge the perceived quality. Finally, I'm trying to get there. Okay, so now each of these indicators will also have errors. And this is how I'm calculating the measurement error. That's what I said, that this is more robust model because it calculates measurement error. That is, error in individual observations. So when you administer a questionnaire which has a Likert scale, 1 to 5, 1 highly disagree, 5 highly agree, all right? Those is then, uh, I mean, these things are then uh, translated into a mean, right, for that particular question. So that will have some error. Correct? It's, it's a mean value. It's a mean value, it will have some error. So that is how I'm calculating my error there. Yeah, and that's why this is more robust. Clear? So like perceived quality, I'm also taking customer expectation. What the customer is expecting. Now for this also I have three indicators which have consequent errors. Now using perceived quality and customer expectations, finally what I'm trying to do is find customer satisfaction. Yeah? Now this customer satisfaction again will have some questions. 
So finally, in this figure, what we see is that customer satisfaction is affected by perceived quality, customer expectation, and also its own set of questions. Construct, 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 variables, which here we call indicators. Yeah, so indicators are given squares or rectangles, constructs are given oval or circle shapes, right? And each line indicates a regression. There are two variables, regression. Clear? So far with me? Yeah? If I don't take all of this, if I just take one, that's a re multiple regression, right? It's a multiple regression. I just have one dependent, multiple independents, multiple regression. Now I'm attaching more. That's all I'm doing here. Okay, of course the complexity is increasing because of that. But here we are not trying to understand the complexity. We're trying to understand only the concept. Okay. Okay. Moving further. Both perceived quality and customer expectation are called exogenous variables. Okay, exogenous variables because they try to explain other constructs. Okay, so if you see uh, the arrows, the arrows will be only outward. Okay, so that's why they are called exogenous variables like your independent